Are you wasting your money on muscle building supplements? If you've bought any recently, the harsh truth is you probably are. The supplement industry is projected to reach $115 billion by 2034, yet only a handful of products are consistently backed up by scientific research. So before you fall for the flashy marketing, let's set a golden rule. If a supplement sounds too good to be true, there's a fat chance it is. A lot of people assume you need things like BCAAs, testosterone boosters, or exotic herbal blends in order to build muscle. But the truth is many of these so-called muscle building supplements have little to no scientific backing whatsoever. Take this creatine product, for example. According to the bottle, this stuff won't just help you build lean muscle fast. You'll feel the intense power surge of pure creatine molecules immediately with no side effects and even give you new strength and stamina beyond your normal limits. At this point, my card details are in. My fingers are hovering over the buy button. But while following our golden rule, researchers put these claims to the test. When when compared to urine samples of those who consumed 2.5 grams of creatine monohydrate, who showed a significant increase in plasma creatine, which is expected if the creatine was absorbed by the body, those who ingested the creatine serum saw no increase in creatine plasma at all. Pretty weird. But further lab analysis confirmed why this was. The serum contained less than 10 milligrams of creatine, which is far too little to impact muscle levels, even with multiple dosing, which means, unfortunately for us, no power surge after all. And this honestly goals for most muscle building supplements on the market. They all rely on clever marketing rather than science. Companies love to imply that their product builds muscle or burns fat with little to no evidence behind those claims. While they can't legally claim that their supplement prevents or cures illnesses, they sure do skirt around the rules and pay others to say similar things for them. I mean, the top two reasons why people choose to buy supplements is personal research or a family or friend recommendation. But before we get too lost in the supplement psyop, Let's focus on the only two strategies backed by science that help promote muscle growth. First, we have our ideal strategy, food. Here, our diet alone should give the body all it needs to build muscle. And for this to be a viable option, your diet needs to support three key bodily processes. First, energy production for training and daily function. Second, recovery to repair muscle tissue. And third, muscle protein synthesis to drive growth. To achieve this, simply eat at maintenance calories to match your daily energy expenditure. Consume around 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, which of course the precise amount will depend on your current goals and your budget and prioritize complete protein sources like beef, chicken, eggs, or dairy to make sure you're getting a complete amino acid profile to build muscle. And this sounds very easy on paper, but there's one problem. It's really not realistic for most people. And this is where our second more realistic strategy comes in, food and gap filling. Here, the aim is to cover as many bases as you can through food and then fill in any little gaps you have with the following three supplements. First, creatine. You've probably heard it a million times before before, but creatine is one of the most researched supplements on the market for muscle growth. At its core, creatine is a molecule produced in the body. It stores high energy phosphate groups as phosphocreatine, which helps regenerate ATP, the body's primary energy source. This is especially useful during weight training or high intensity exercise, where energy production is needed for short bursts of strength and power. But if creatine is created by the body, why should we supplement it? Well, you tend to lose around two grams of creatine daily, and we don't usually get all of that creatine back through food alone, unless you're eating a couple kilos of beef heart in a sitting. Creatine monohydrate is a cheap, proven way to maintain high levels and maximize your strength. You can either take three to five grams daily, which may take longer to saturate your stores, or follow a five to seven day loading phase of 20 to 25 grams a day, split into four to five doses before transitioning to three to five grams daily. Both methods will saturate your creatine stores and support muscle growth over time, so really the choice is yours. Just look for a third party tested brand and take it consistently. Consistently. Second, we have protein powder. We all know that protein is essential for muscle growth. It provides the amino acids needed for muscle protein synthesis, the process that increases muscle fiber size after exercise. Without enough protein, the body can't effectively recover or grow stronger. But if we can get protein through our diet, why is there such a need to supplement it? Well, vegans and vegetarians may meet their daily protein requirement, but a lot of plant-based proteins often lack one or more of the essential amino acids, particularly leucine, which is essential 
essential for muscle protein synthesis and recovery, making it important for plant-based eaters to consume a variety of complementary protein sources to make sure they reach adequate essential amino acid intake and maximize their muscle building potential. But even for those of us who do eat meat, a lot of us do struggle to hit our protein goal, whether it's appetite, time, or even mundane problems like not being bothered to cook, can leave someone eating far below their recommended intake in order to build muscle. And this is where it makes a lot of sense to supplement in protein powder. I wouldn't use it as your go-to protein option, but if you are struggling to hit your target, then it may be an affordable way to fill the gap. And you do have a few options from what protein powder you can choose from. First, whey. As the name suggests, whey protein comes from whey, the liquid left over after milk is turned into cheese. It's a fast digesting protein, which is most commonly used in supplements and comes in three main forms. Concentrate, isolate, and hydrolysate. Although hydrolysate is pre-digested for faster absorption and is claimed to be more soluble than whey isolate, studies show no major nutrition nutritional advantage compared to other forms of whey. So the one you take largely depends on what one doesn't hurt your tummy and the one that is least disgusting. Second, we have casein. Unlike whey, casein is much slower to digest as it forms a gel in your stomach. Casein's amino acid levels reach peak around seven hours post intake, making it ideal for longer gaps between meals or as a pre-bedtime option. And third, we have plant-based protein. This option is for all my lactose intolerant queens or my vegans and vegetarians out there. There's definitely a very common misconception online that vegans can't build muscle because where's the meat? But vegans can absolutely build muscle as long as their total protein intake is sufficient and they're eating a variety of plant-based proteins to make sure they're hitting all their essential amino acids. So just like a meat eater, for my vegans out there who struggle to eat a variety of protein options or just struggle to hit their protein goal in general, supplementing using a protein powder just makes sense. In order to get a complete amino acid profile, opt for protein powders that combine multiple plant-based sources such as soy, pea, wheat, or potato protein, or even high leucine options like mycoprotein. This should let you cover any gaps left in your diet while helping you reach your protein goal. Third, and finally, we have caffeine. Caffeine is a well-researched stimulant known to enhance alertness, energy, and exercise performance. And when I mention caffeine as a supplement, I am not talking about the pre-workouts. I'm talking about your basic old cup of joe. Many pre-workouts are just overpriced and mainly rely on caffeine for their performance-enhancing benefits. Research suggests that a caffeine intake of around three to six milligrams per kilo of body weight taken 60 minutes before training can enhance performance. And although it is pretty hard to pinpoint the exact caffeine amount in a cup of coffee, to put this into context, a typical brewed coffee usually contains around 80 to 120 milligrams per cup. Drinking too much coffee can cause anxiety, insomnia, rapid heartbeat and digestive issues. So if you're sensitive, start lower. However, for most healthy adults, 200 to 400 milligrams a day is generally well tolerated, meaning you can enjoy caffeine in moderation to support muscle growth. And that is it for today's video. Let me know down below what supplements you take and if they actually work for you. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and join us, Pookies. We are now at 100,000 of us. <laughs> it's a little bit scary, I won't lie. Thank you guys so much for being here and supporting me and supporting each other and supporting the channel. I love and appreciate you all. Let me know down below what you want to see from me next. And until then, I hopefully will catch you guys in my next one.